Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to episode 17 of the phase How to Become a Doctor video podcast. You know, phase is pre-health advising, support and education. So we're here to uh, support, you know, all LSU students, LSU uh, alumni, and, you know, anyone else we can serve, uh, you know. So this podcast is hosted by Robbie Bowen, our director of pre-health programs, and me, Matt Duris, uh, pre-health advisor here at LSU. Um, we have a special guest today. This is episode 17. So if you missed one through 16, go back and watch them on YouTube. But if you're here now watching or uh, you know watching at a later date, uh, we have a wonderful guest here, uh, Carisha Washington. We're going to um, have Mr. Bowen uh, introduce uh, her to you guys, and so I'll pass it off. Yes, so thank you guys for, for joining us today. We're excited to have Carisha with us. Um, she is an LSU alum. She went, um, she was here um, as a microbiology major, earned her degree in microbiology with um, a minor in sociology um, before going off to medical school. So um, we're excited to have her and to let her share with us about her journey and her experiences and how um, She's transitioned from an LSU Tiger to a Florida Gator at University of Florida Medical School. So, Carisha, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you. I know you're busy, so thank you for taking time out. I'm just going to let you tell people who you are and, and introduce yourself to our students. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Like, honestly, what an honor. I love LSU. Um, yes, yeah, so my name is Carisha Washington. I'm from Shreveport, Louisiana. I, like Mr. Bowen said, I went to school at LSU, um, majored in microbiology um, with a minor in sociology, and just uh, really love the performance art, singing, acting, but really have a passion for medicine um, and science as well. So I'm here at the University of Florida pursuing the MD PhD program. I had forgotten that you were from uh, Shreveport. So shout out to 318, right? So Yes, 318. <laughs> So, um, Karish, can you just talk a little bit about, you know, when you were here at LSU, what were some of the things that you, um, you know, took took part in or you participated in um, that sort of helped, you know, develop you into um, the competitive medical school applicant? Yes. Um, so before actually even stepping on LSU's campus, I was able to be uh, part of the principal's Millennial Scholars Program. And this was a program designed by LSU for students from diverse backgrounds and really just to like mentor us throughout LSU. So that was very um, impactful for me. Taught me also a lot about diversity, equity, inclusion, and just developed my passion for um, diversity related issues as well. Um, so that's part of um, what I did. And I was also able to be a leader in the program and sort of help uh, bring diversity related issues to the Office of Diversity there at LSU. Um, and just like have different and help with different workshops that are centered around like diversity activities just to learn more about um, health equity and such things. And I was also part of the Student Christian Medical Association. Um, it just really combined my passion for faith with medicine and sort of gave me the fuel I needed to get through the pre-med track. Um, I know it can be just daunting and challenging. So that was really helpful in that area as well. So my sophomore year, I was the fundraising chair um, for the organization, and we would have um, national like mission trips or international mission trips we would go on as well. So my junior year, I became the president of SCM SCMA, and I was able to organize different like events, bring different physicians in to talk about their faith, talk about medicine as well. And then we were able to actually go on a mission trip to Ecuador, which was a life-changing experience. So just really learning from the people who live there and just how to just like enjoy like the small things in life really. Um, and I was also in gospel choir, which I said, I love performance arts. So I really enjoyed um, that as well at LSU. So, um while you were here as an undergrad, I know that you were involved in research um, at the undergraduate level, and that kind of led to your interest in the MD-PhD sort of joint program. Can you just talk a little bit about your research experience while you were at the undergrad level? Yes. Yeah, so actually, um, my first like research opportunity began in high school um, at LSU Shreveport Health Science Center, and I was able to research Alzheimer's disease. 
And since, I guess, leaving from Shreveport every summer during undergrad, I would go back and continue research. And that's when I would really just fell in love with research and didn't see my life being without research because at the time I was solely um, just like medicine and not really considering research. Um, and I was also able to uh, be part of the honors program at LSU and work on my honors thesis. So this was done with Dr. Han in biological sciences and really um, it was sort of impacted during the pandemic because um, I graduated in 2020. Um, but being able to learn just the methods and techniques of biology more upfront and especially scientific writing, I really learned a lot from Dr. Han. So how did you, um, what led you to medicine? How, how did you come to that um, realization that that's where your future was going to be? Yes, um, I guess, you know, everyone has their own like story in a way. But for me, I was born in Okinawa, Japan. Um, and my my dad was in the military, so that's why we were over there. And it was only my parents and my grandmother. But when I was born, I initially was not breathing. And that was just, of course, very concerning for my parents. And the physician even um, believed that if I was able to make it that he said I would be in a vegetable state. And so um, just the ability to be able to learn and grasp things, be able to pursue science has always been just very impactful for me um, because I wasn't diagnosed, I guess you could say, um, to be able to do those things. And so growing up, I always sort of like had an interest in medicine, hearing from my parents talk about my birth story and everything. Um, but at the same time, I wanted to be like an actress, you know, just everything all over the place. But um, I'll tell you about my experience in high school. So it was my chemistry teacher that sort of really changed my trajectory in a way, um, because I was just starting to become more like just better at chemistry, I guess you could say. And she realized my potential. And so she recommended for me to take part in like this research program in high school. and. It was during uh, when I was researching Alzheimer's disease that my grandmother came to stay with me and she was beginning to show early signs of dementia. And I was able to see up hand or really just like firsthand how research can really impact medicine, especially uh, people in my community, family members. So that's what really drove me to medicine. Okay. So before we get into like, you know, medical school and your program and all that, um, so most of our, you know, this, most of our audience is um, pre-med, are pre-med, and they are getting ready to, you know, take the MCAT or start the application and all that. So I just wanted to see what advice would you give, you know, thinking back to, you know, Carisha three or four years ago, like what, what do you wish you had known or what advice would you give to people at that stage? Yes, I would say that you're more than a number, you're more than a number. I cannot say it enough, you're more than a number. So just to be like open and more vulnerable, I took the MCAT twice. Um, both times I did not get what I wanted on the MCAT. Both, first time I cried, second time I fought <laughs> tears. Um, but each score was lower than the average score for the University of Florida. So like, don't let a number like hold you back from applying. Um, just try to like certain schools look at you more holistically they look at your experiences like who you are um, what organizations you've been in um you know letters of recommendations try to give yourself that grace and like look at yourself holistically as well um as far as for studying for the MCAT I realized for so the first time I took it was in April of my junior year and I was just taking a lot of different classes then, like um, I think it was biochemistry, physics too. And I really wasn't treating MCAT studying like a class in itself, which I would like suggest as well. So trying more intense classes or just like lessen your class load would be very helpful for studying for the MCAT. And then also I was doing a lot of content review for the first time. So reading a lot of Kaplan books and everything, but I realized that the second time around, um, I took it in August, so I was able to prepare more in the summer. 
I was able to really um, do more practice questions. So whether that's like getting the AAMC and trying to get like access to um, their test books or their set of test questions because they're the ones who make the MCAT or to um, do cap instead of reading Kaplan to actually see if they have like Kaplan test or like other tests and just increase my endurance for the test as well because it's an eight hour exam. Yeah. I've never taken an eight hour exam at LSU. Maybe things have changed, but <laughs> uh, that test requires a lot of endurance. So also putting aside certain Saturdays where, okay, I can't make it to the movies with my friends this time, but I have to take this eight hour practice exam and really try to incorporate um, those methods in it as well. So so you survived, um, you know, the pandemic and classes going off, you know, going online and, you know, all that disruption during the middle of your pre-med preparations and interviews and all that. So how did you, um, you know, how did you deal with that during that time period? Yes, I guess um, I think it hits each sort of class differently for me. Thankfully, I was able to go to all interviews in person because most interviews happened before like Shut February down. of 2020. Yeah. Exactly. But um, such certain things like going to a second look, which is where you can, um, after your acceptance program, you can go and try to like, you know, see the program again and decide on whether you want to attend. Um, all of that was virtual for me. And um I think it just played a role. Then also not having, of course, like the in-person LSU graduation and such things um, played its own role. But I think um, like once coming to medical school, that was even um, different, like having anatomy lab for the first semester um, via Zoom. And so you're trying to look at cadavers and trying to first assess the orientation, like is the head on the left side or the right side? <laughs> And then trying to figure out what body part it was. So I think um, it just played a, a lot of different things and also impacted like family and personal stuff going on. Um, so having that sort of acceptance is what helped to drive me um, through those different issues. Okay. So before we get specifically to um, to Florida, so during the process of like, how did you decide where you were going to apply and can you just talk a little bit about like when you're doing the MD PhD, how that process is a little different from just the straight MD program and sort of, you know, what, what was the process and what did you have to do? Yes. Yeah, so I would say, sorry, the first question was what like, again? Yeah. How did you decide like where you were going to okay. apply and things like that? Mm -hmm. um, so I sort of discussed this with my parents. So I think it's good to just whoever like you, see as like your mentor or family member to like really sit down with you because it's also um, is money behind it as well. So you sort of have to be strategic with what you apply to. So um, I had a lot of family in Texas. And so I did go through like the TM DAS system yeah. um, mm -hmm. for Texas, but that was still hard itself because I'm not a Texas resident. Um, so I would think if you don't really have a residency like in Texas that can be really hard but as far as um for other schools I sort of like did two extreme dream schools because you never know and then um the rest like I sat down with my parents and I sort of thought about location and the things that I enjoy so I'm a southern girl I really am so I was looking at schools in the Southeast and then also like, I loved LSU. I love like a flagship university. Um, so those were like the factors that um, came into play. So like applying to like UAB, University of Florida, uh, UGA were um, things that I really like prioritized. Mm -hmm. So um, so how is the MD PhD application cycle? How's that different yes. than just a straight MD application? Yeah, so there's not, too many things that are different. Um, for the primary application, there are two extra ess essays that are needed. Um, one focuses on like, why do you want to pursue the MD PhD program? So it's really just like a personal statement that's tailored towards the MD PhD program. 
And then the second one is tell me about your research experiences. So this is where you like list, um, I would, I think it's about like a thousand words or it's pretty lengthy. So you're able to like really go into depth about a certain research project, why you are passionate about it. Were you able to um, go to any conferences or like, did you gain anything from going to different conferences? Like how did this, these experiences grow you as a researcher? Why do you see your life as a physician researcher and not just a physician or not just a researcher? Um, so it was really those two essays um, that I did. And then I think that's pretty much standardized across like the U.S. And as far as once the interview takes place, some universities do MD and MD PhD um, separately, separate interviews. And if you're like interested in applying to the MD PhD program, I would really research the school because certain schools do the application process differently in that for instance, I remember one school said that I could either apply to the MD program or the MD PhD program, either or. So say if I was qualified enough to get into their MD program, but I only applied to their MD PhD program and just something was off and didn't like make the cut, then I wouldn't be considered at all for their school. So if you're only applying to schools like that, that's probably not the best idea. There are schools that will um, allow you to apply to the MD PhD program. If you don't make it into that specific program, you can still qualify for the MD program. And um, I've heard I've heard of like individuals that that's happened to before. Um, so I think those are different um, things, but that's pretty much what takes place like differently for application. Yeah. So, um, so I know you had a couple of options about where to go. Why did you pick Florida? Yes. Um, so I should say upfront, the MD PhD program is really a financial blessing. I don't know if um, a lot of people know that, but they uh, typically all across like the U.S. will have free tuition. Um, so that was really the thing that I think is the biggest incentive because it is a long amount of time. Um, mm -hmm. You're getting two degrees. Um, and so while you're investing time, they're investing in you financially, um, which is really great. So different schools do it differently. Um, as far as some schools will have you sort of um, get loans for the first two years and wait until you finish your PhD before they like compensate you, but you're also not getting, you also have free tuition throughout the PhD. So it's like differently, but at UF, um, they were giving me like a stipend and free tuition from like first joining. So that was a really big thing. Yeah, that's, um, that's also, huge. That's huge. That's yeah. huge. I, I have to mention that. That's huge. Yeah. But they're more than just their money. I do really like um, UF. They really, um, so I was just like sort of told you about just applying to places all over really the Southeast. And it wasn't until I really came to UF for the interview that I fell in love with University of Florida. Like they, um, I never spoken to them over the phone or anything, but as soon as they saw me, their faculty like, hello, Carisha, how are you doing? And I was like, you know how to pronounce my name. You're <laughs> saying, oh, you don't have to stand up. You can sit down to greet me. I'm like, whoa, this is so out of the norm. And um, just, I told you sort of how I'm like a person of faith. And so like hearing uh, one of the presentations about the soul of the profession, I was like, oh, wow. Or I love the office. And so like, seeing some a student walk around with a shirt with the office on it I was like is this a sign and <laughs> just different things like that um but what really sold me is I remember after interviewing after the interview day the current medical students came out and just applauded all of us and I was like I was about to cry honestly so um they sold me and I remember going back with my parents um to Louisiana and I felt like nostalgic like I felt I was like leaving a certain home in a way. So that's what really told me you have posted for me. Yeah. Um, so, you, so you talked a little bit about the culture of the school and kind of the support there. Can you kind of walk us through like when you're MD, PhD, you know, what does your, you know, kind of year by year, what does it look like for you? So you're yes. third, your third year right now, right? So is that right? Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So the first, um, you typically do the, like the first two years of the MD program. So that's going to be like your basic sciences and like your classwork. 
and then you'll go into the PhD program. And that can differ based on what you get your PhD in. That's also something I should have mentioned that I like about the University of Florida. So I'm able to pursue epidemiology where a lot of other schools are only like doing a PhD in basic sciences and only allow for that. Um, so there are people researching like anthropology and implementation science here. So it allows for like a diverse amount of research. And so to focus back, um, so you. Yeah, that's one of the do, advantages oh. of a med, uh, uh, that's one of the advantages of a medical school on a college campus, because you can you can do things in the humanities and the other things that aren't available at a health sciences center sometimes. So. Very true. Very true. Well, I never really <laughs> put that to perspective, but I mean, that's how it yeah. works. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so after like you complete like the PhD program, so uh, whether it's like three to five years is typically um, the range, then you go back for the last two years of medical school. So that's um, where you do like the actual clinical rotations and are in the wards and viewing mm -hmm. different specialties. So right now, I just finished the first two years of medical school, so the basic sciences, and I'm now in the first year of the PhD program. And so it's most of your day in the lab. I mean, what's kind of your typical day like right now? Mm -hmm. So I do more like uh, data analysis. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, so I'm pursuing epidemiology. So a day in my life is like really um, doing some office work. I also still have to go to classes because it's like a whole, you know, PhD program. Most people are like, what, you should go to classes? Yes, like, let's go to classes. Uh, but then also I'm really passionate about like the community. So my research, uh, prior research was more like basic sciences and like the bench side um, type of work. But I really am passionate about like community-based research. So I like to like go to community talks, whether it's on um, the weekend or different like community engagement events um, to really get like, the community's feedback in my research because I'm looking at um, the racial disparities in cancer and cancer survival. Um, so I can't learn better from other than going to the community. Yeah. Um, so I know that sometimes um, like pre-med students sometimes think that, you know, when you get to med school, like all you do is study 24 seven. Uh, and I know that you, and then, I mean, I know you study a lot, but um Tell us a little bit about some of your other activities. Matt mentioned earlier about um, what is it, the White Coat Company? Is that the name of the the program? The, tell us a little yes. bit about what you what your other extracurricular things that you've had a chance to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, so I'm going to be part of the White Coat Company. So I really love the performance arts. So every year, um, the White Coat Company is an organization at the medical school where. Uh, different students can put on plays that are usually Disney plays for uh, the children's hospital. And since I joined, we were doing it more virtually and filming the plays and then showing it later to the children because of COVID. But this is the first year we get to do it live. So this year um, I'm going to be in Shrek and I've done it for the past like two years and I'm going to be the magic mirror <laughs> in Shrek. So I'm really excited about it and really just, um, uh, I love acting so to really like have an impact on the children then also they have like a gator scott talent show and they actually be the mc for it so that's another thing i'll be doing which i'm really excited about i just love being on a stage if you can't tell so <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your social media uh, you've got like um like you have your own tiktok and all that so tell us tell us how people can see you Woo! okay yes <laughs> i'm on tiktok uh, at Carisha J. So really, I love motivating people. That's why I really wanted um, and really honored to be here to just like share my story. Hopefully you can encourage others. So you can find me on TikTok, just doing random silly things, trying to brighten someone's day and encourage people to keep going. Um, and so it's it's Carisha J-A-Y, right? Yes. J-A-Y. J-A-Y. Yeah. So um, do you think that... Um, I mean, do you think that most med students at UF have opportunities to do, how do you do that? Like, I'm sure you have to be very organized and have uh, your time well planned. How, is that, how do you find time to do stuff like that? Yes, I don't really find much time. Um, <laughs> really, it was like 
the PhD program um, allowed me to have more like flexibility, like with research. It's sort of hard to do that during your first and second year of medical school. But I would say if it's something you're really passionate about, like setting apart that time, whether it's on like a weekend, like once a month or something um, is really fun. And then taking pressure off yourself. So I have no skills in like cinema and photography and all of that. So I'm not like looking for the perfect editing or something like that. Um, so something that could take someone five hours takes me 30 minutes because I'm really not stressing that. I'm just trying to give someone a laugh, uh, really. So um, just a couple couple of last questions here. When, what's something that um, surprised you about medical school or something that, you know, you didn't realize until you got there? The amount of work. I don't want to discourage anyone, but it really is the amount of work. So I knew medical school would be hard, but it's sort of different from LSU in a way. Like LSU was like, you're taking physics and organic chemistry and like wild things. But like in medical school, some things could come easier, like learning about diabetes or high blood pressure, different diseases. But you're learning about all of these things so much. Like I think there's about, they say, 15 credits that you take in like three months or just something like very cadets in medical school. So like, I would say, even if you're for studying wise, what can help prepare you is doing something every day. I think I really fell off with that. Sometimes in undergrad, I would be like, okay, this like test is in a month. I'll study two weeks before, but like, that's not gonna cut it in medical school. So like just doing something, um, whether it's 30 minutes, every single day is sort of having that reinforcement um, is very helpful. Then also wellness. Um, if you don't take care of yourself, this this life, this world sometimes will not take care of you. So like scheduling 15 minutes, 30 minutes every day for something that gives you like excitement, um, something that sort of calms you, relaxes you would be very like helpful. That's one thing I wish I did with like time management and like managing in like actual wellness time would have been very helpful. So you're going to um, end up with an MD and a PhD in epidemiology. So I know, you know, life always throws curveballs, but what do you see yourself doing? Um, where are we going to see you in like 10 years? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Not a heavy You're question. You're going to be the most all. the most educated actress in the world. You're going to be like this. Gonna... <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would say like my interest, like as far as specialty, changes a lot just because there's so many like interesting things um, from like oncology to like otolaryngology. But the one thing that won't change is just my passion for people and really passion for health justice. That's what. Um, caused me to really pursue epidemiology and look how and examine how certain diseases affect other populations um, disproportionately. And I see myself sort of continuing that like, community-based like research, really um, just looking at clinical research as well to advance medicine. I would really love to be in academic medicine and teaching and researching and like mentoring other students as well. And then also I'd love to be like a physician in the Office of Diversity and Health Equity at a certain institution. They were very instrumental in helping me at the University of Florida. Um, but really, I just see myself helping people through medicine and research. Yeah. Um, so coming from LSU and going, going to Florida, I mean, did you feel um, prepared? Do you feel like LSU prepared you well for what you... I know it's very different, but did you feel you got preparation that you needed to be successful? I definitely will say so. Like, I definitely can't see myself like being here without LSU. I'm very grateful for LSU. Um, just the various different experiences I've had at LSU, whether it's the people I've met and the social support and the other students I've surrounded myself with in pre-med that always believed that I could do it when I didn't always believe it myself. That was very um, helpful for me. Um, take the rigor of certain classes, like the difficulty of some classes at LSU, like definitely um, help prepare me. Parasitology, 
I don't know if that's still happening at LSU, but that type of amount of information, that's pretty comparable to medical school. So that was very helpful. Uh, but this just really growing me as an independent like person, just the college life itself. Um, yes, LSU definitely played an instrumental role. Great. Well, we are extremely proud of you and um, all of your accomplishments. And um, I just want to, right before we close, I'm just going to, one thing that, one piece of advice you could give for the people who are going to be watching this video. Don't stop. Do not stop. There's so many things, um, whether it's like a tough class, you failed an exam, you know, professor's a little hard on you, um, life happening. There's so many like different excuses I could have gave myself to stop, but people need you. People actually need you. Make sure you surround yourself with people who believe in you, support you. I still remember at LSU when I got into medical school, oh, one of the best surprises I ever had were, were my friends gave me a surprise party for my acceptance into medical school. So that was just like phenomenal and really just encouraged me to keep going. Um, making sure you remind yourself you're more than just a number, reaching out to Mr. Bowen, making sure you're getting the right resources needed uh, to prepare you well for medical school, um, keeping up with organizations, pre-med organizations. So I told you about like the Student Question Medical Association, but I know like AED is very helpful. Um, so just making sure you're plugged in and then giving yourself grace, taking time to just sort of decompress when the pre-med track can be sort of like heavy. So yeah. I know there's a lot of things I said that wasn't just one thing. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. No, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I know that um, life is crazy right now. And so the um, fact that you took some time out, we, we sincerely appreciate it. And I know that our students will, um, you know, be inspired um by you today so um thank you so much uh, matt you have any yeah no yeah i just want to we'll, we'll wrap up there i do i just want to thank uh, Carisha again and encourage you guys you know definitely listen you know to these podcasts these uh are professionals and medical students and taking time out of their schedule to help encourage you guys and also you know everyone here typically that we interview uh you know is usually happy if you reach out to them with questions. So you can contact Mr. Bowen and I, we can get you connected uh, to Carisha. Obviously you can see her on uh, social media, but I'll uh, definitely check out our other episodes, but also uh, share share the word about this one. You can follow us uh, at LSU Pre-Health on Instagram and follow the LSU Phase uh, YouTube channel by subscribing. So th thanks again, Carisha, appreciate it. Thank you for Thanks, Carisha. Thank you. Great, great to see you.